All right, I've started the recording, um, and uh, I did want to you know, welcome you. I see Dr. Curry, it still says you're on. <laughs> That's the scary thing. You hey, have I the still dialogue. have this rolling. Uh, please wait. Please wait. It yeah. says please wait, but it, it's not. It's That doesn't sound right. But anyway, uh, so anyway, um, I have our little uh, track racetrack up here so we can get an idea of where we are at. Uh, we are in around the, what is it, second week? Almost the third week of October, my lord. So we are um, heading toward November, and um, the entire month of November will be for practice, peer practice, uh, so that you can um, train you can practice with your own sessions, and we will be your students. Um, so that's uh, what we're going to be doing uh, primarily. We will be working on finishing up anything that we haven't covered to date, and most of the rest of the class will be answering questions or demonstrating any uh, techniques that you aren't sure about. Um, the uh, just to talk about the Moodle a little bit, I went into the Moodle um, earlier this evening, and in the courses space, we now have a Spring 2019 courses uh, group category. So if you click on it, you will see that our courses are um, here. Uh, those that are being set up to be taught in the spring um, also, we will be moving the courses that are in the uh, fall 2018, if they have an instructor for 2019, we'll be moving those as well, pastoral counseling, intro to church admin, and Old Testament survey too. Those are the three uh, that were uh, offered in the fall. So we have, let me bring up the actual courses. Yep. We have nearly a full slate of courses, which I'm very, very pleased about. Uh, like I said, Dr. Wells did say that she planned to... Um, oh my gosh, I forgot about that. Oh, I've got to talk to uh, Dr. Bell. Um, anyway, uh, Dr. Wells said she planned to take this course listing and the list of instructor bios uh, did you guys both get your bios to me, your updated bios? I didn't. I, I emailed you uh, asking about it, but I didn't get a response, so oh. I didn't send it. Okay. Uh, let me look at what I show for you. Bell, Bell Bland, Boyd, Chappelle. Oops. Fields, back up a little bit. No, I don't have a Curry bio at all. Um, so anything that you send me would be helpful. And I don't have a Brent bio either. <laughs> I so. didn't know the Brent supposed to send in one. Sure. I thought he was only doing you for the people that were teaching class. Well, the, the point of this is if you are qualified to teach even one class, um, I would like to put your name on here so that we can demonstrate our, um, our bench depth, if you will. In other words, we don't just have two or three people. We've got you know 18 or 20 people prepared to teach. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and that... Uh, points out the, uh, I would say, the, uh, the durability of the online course offerings. Oh, okay. Okay, so um, the, it, the uh, format is pretty basic. Um, it's got your uh, ecclesiastical title and uh, your name. If you have a, uh, a degree, like Dr. Curry, if you have a degree, that belongs in your name. And then right after that, in parentheses, just put the course or courses that you um, plan to teach or plan to be available to teach. 
Okay. And then a few sentences about you. Uh, some of these uh, bios are, you know, about five or six sentences. Uh, some are a little bit longer. Uh, the goal is not to fill a page. The goal is to just give a uh, brief outline of your uh, qualifications and maybe a little bit about you that that shows uh, a little bit about your personality. Uh, let me go down and read mine. Mine is definitely not standard. Um, and part of the reason for that is I don't consider myself to be an educator so much as I consider myself to be a trainer. And the difference is you know, slight, but I still think it's distinct. So I'm going to go down and read about me. I put my name last. Uh, because I think that's where I belong um, in such esteemed company. But uh, uh, I said uh, Elder Scott A. Scotty Ward. Uh, I do like my nickname. It sort of sets me apart. And then uh, under uh, courses I teach, I have Train the Trainer, which is this course, Leadership Principles and Homiletics. I've taught uh, or co-taught those two on the Moodle. And then I say, Elder Ward is an IT program manager with nearly 30 years experience designing and supporting IT systems in the federal government. I started when I was six. Anyway, <laughs> it, it says, uh, he has taught online courses since 2010. Elder Ward is an award-winning technical system designer and trainer who deployed and has operated the CHMJI Moodle system as a ministry of love to the Church of God in Christ since 2011. His online Train the Trainer course has helped dozens of CHMJI instructors transition their skills and courses from traditional to online format. While serving in the military, Elder Ward achieved certification in technical instruction, tests and measurements, and instructional system design. Elder Ward is an FCC licensed amateur radio operator, which has nothing to do with anything. It's just something I like talking about. Um, and a former community radio announcer, having received professional vocal and voiceover training. He is the director of the CHMJI Waldorf, Maryland campus, information systems director, and ministerial and media team member at New Community Church of God in Christ in Waldorf, Maryland, under pastor and founder, Superintendent Willie R. Hunt. He serves as chairman of the New Community Development Corporation, providing a wide range of human value enhancement programs to Southern Maryland communities. He holds an associate's degree with distinction in applied management from National American University, a Bachelor of Science degree summa cum laude in Computer Information Systems from Strayer University, and an MBA in Project Management from American Intercontinental University. So, and you know, if you read some of the others, they are uh, far more academic than mine. So I had to make mine somewhat, you know, historic for me myself. Um, you know, many people, uh, many of our instructors are. Uh, I mean, they have dozens of years' experience serving the church in a variety of roles. Um, district missionaries. Um, uh, we had a uh, with uh, Dean Thomas, who was here, an actual jurisdictional first lady. Um, so we've had lots of uh, people with lots of history with the Church of God in Christ. Um, mm -hmm. And mine, you know, the only thing that I can say is that. I'm a techie, you know, so that's the big difference. Um, so, Dr. Wells, it says, Evangelist Dr. F uh, oh, wow, Dr. Frank's Wells. And I guess that's the way she wrote it. A retired educator has served as president of Saints Academy and College, a branch of the Church of God in Christ education system in Lexington, Mississippi. She is a member of the Board of Trustees of Wells Memorial Church of God in Christ in Greensboro, North Carolina, District Missionary of the High Point District, and member of the Education Committee of the Greater North Carolina Jurisdiction and the, of the Church of God in Christ. Originally from Edenton, North Carolina, 
Dr. Wells has undergraduate and graduate degrees from Hampton University and North Carolina A&T State University and a doctorate from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. So you know, just a little bit about some of our uh, bios. Just something like that. Um, okay. It doesn't have to be extensive. Okay. You know, like I said, some of these are deep. <laughs> You know, I have a two-page uh, oh beta, so oh my. You know, like two and a half pages, but I'll just cut all of my academic part out and just um, do church-related okay. activities. Okay, can. that would be wonderful. And uh, and then if you get that, I, I will make sure to add it to these bios. So okay. that would be very helpful. Thank you. Um, any uh, questions, Evangelist Brent? No, no, sir. That that's fine. I was just trying to see. I was trying to see. Will I be able to pull that up? Oh, sure. To, to um, yeah. In fact, what I will do is uh, for everybody's um, review, I'm going to send the uh, link for the bios. Okay. And let me go back to courses and POCs for the bios. I'm going to say share and then copy the link. And Okay, so now uh, everyone has the link to those bios. You can't edit the bios online, but you can review them. Okay. And, and then just I send just me your read and kind of see the format of kind of what what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, they don't. How do I say this? I haven't gotten too uh, fastidious on the actual format itself. Uh, I've allowed every instructor to be as expressive as they like and and talk about the things that are valuable to them, um, uh -huh. which you know I think that's that's fine, whatever works. Uh, so um, this evening, a couple things that I did want to get to and and describe to you. Um, do each of you have a freeconferencecall.com account? I do. I okay. do. All right, so you can, if you you know wanted to today, you could host a course. Um, you have the same ability I do with free conference call, so that's good. Um, also, I do recommend that you get uh, or at least spend some time on YouTube because there are just so many good things there. For example. <coughs> Excuse me. This evening, I was looking at in information on how to upgrade my Moodle because it's it's time to upgrade. It hasn't been upgraded in quite some time, so um, it will allow you to do things. Let's say uh, you do Moodle tests, and uh, you will see there are you know how to create a quiz in Moodle. Uh, great information. So this is a Moodle test. Oh, I just typed tests, T-E-S-T-S. -S. Oh, test, test. Okay. Right. And it just, you know, shows you how to do it, how to start one, how to put questions into it, you know, what to put into a particular question. Similar to what I teach, but probably with a little different focus. And uh, I, I really do recommend, admittedly, there is a lot of, questionable stuff on YouTube, but there's also a lot of very valuable stuff. So um, specific to Moodle, I do recommend uh, if you want to learn something, just go out on the Moodle or out on uh, YouTube and type Moodle and whatever you want. Um, let's see, Moodle um, blocks 
and it'll actually tell you what are Moodle blocks, and you'll go from there. The blocks, as a reminder, the Moodle itself, blocks are the things, I'm going to go back to the home, the blocks are these things off to the right hand side and each block uh, has some value but you can also choose to add blocks you can remove blocks it's totally up to you what you want to do uh, with your particular Moodle space you can put blocks there that the, the students will use um, and hide blocks that you know they will not so, for example, you can do that. Um, so, anyway, I, I do recommend you become acquainted with YouTube in reference to Moodle capabilities, how to configure certain things, etc. Uh, Moodle is extreme. I'm sorry, YouTube is extremely helpful. Uh, one other thing I would say is that if you are um, wanting to get deeper into Moodle. Now, <clears throat> I've been doing Moodle for a lot of years. However, I don't have an in-depth knowledge of Moodle. I have just scratched the surface. I have set up this Moodle and there are Moodle administrators out there that do this for a living and they are highly versed in how to do certain things within the Moodle. I know how to do a few things and I have taught you that same level. I don't go much deeper than what I've taught you. So there could be some things that really interest you that you probably need to look at other sources to help you become more acquainted with them. So uh, if you go on to Moodle.org, you can actually search under documentation and say, I want to find something having to do with uh, quizzes. And it will actually say, oh, well, here's the quiz module in Moodle. And uh, they actually also link to um, some YouTube videos. So these are literally YouTube videos that Moodle links to. So probably a very good slate of instructions here. Um, so again, I do recommend that, uh, that you get yourself a Moodle.org uh, account um, uh, and you know, try and... We don't pay for Moodle, but I really do um, encourage people to support Moodle at least by... Uh, showing your support, creating an account, navigating to their pages, etc. I believe that Moodle was one of the first internet companies to have um, a million accounts. And Moodle's Ooh. free. So, you know, Moodle.org is, is just massively popular uh, to the... Um, educational institutions. Um, it has really taken off in the last eight or ten years. I think Moodle began in 2004, 2005. So it's well over ten years old and uh, going strong. Um, any questions? Any questions? Not at this point. Okay. All right. Uh, I do have a listing of courses up here, and if you have a an anticipated semester start date, uh, that would be helpful for us to put on here. Um, and let's see. Huh. Huh. I don't show Curry, and I don't show... I don't show either one of you on here. So really, but I, I mean, you know, the call in is is what I'm utilizing. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, I'm I looking. Still say that I clicked on rejoin, and yeah. I don't know what's going on with it. Um, 
I'm sorry about that. You may uh, want to restart your browser. In other words, turn the browser off and then restart it and see if that helps. I can't I imagine see. what what the issue is, but that's just a guess. So Evangelist Brent, uh, there are uh, a number of courses available. And uh, just so you know, if there's already someone in a particular space, let's say um, homiletics, and I'll you know, hit one of the big guns, homiletics. And uh, according to this, uh, Evangelist Jordan says that she will teach it in the spring. Well, that doesn't mean that you can't teach it. It was my desire that we get at least some breadth of courses. We don't want to have you know three or four different people teaching the same course because that um, makes it more difficult for the students and you end up with smaller classes. So, um, uh, But if there is a particular course that interests you, go ahead and uh, volunteer to teach it and we'll add it to this especially if you already know the day and time that you wish to teach let's get the word out and see how many people are interested and we will go from there okay so uh, don't think that simply because we have one person signed up to teach Kojic doctrine we can't have two because that's not true okay and just so uh, yes, let, me, let me ask a question. And so at this point, uh, are students assigned based on the number of students uh, that enroll on their own, or are we actually recruiting students mm. for um, our course? There, I always appreciate recruiting students because um, – and, and the best way to do that is to download and print this page and distribute mm -hmm. it because that shows not only the courses that you may be interested in teaching but also courses that others are teaching and we all work together to help make this as available and known as possible um, throughout the, the church and again there's no advertising for, for this it's all word of mouth. So if you don't tell people, they won't know. Okay. Gotcha. So anyway, uh, I, I've left this to be one page in size so that it will print quite easily. Um, and all you have to do is copy this. Uh, if you are going in and looking at it, if you have uh, Moodle, I'm sorry, Google Docs, you can actually click on file and then download as PDF and when you do that it will download a single page PDF that you can immediately print uh, or send to people in email it's totally fine uh, I whenever I do an update to this page I change the current as of date so you can actually use that and say you know well this was as of October 20th but now it's November 10th, and, and I know there have been a couple changes, so you can request an update from that. And come back here, download the page to a PDF, and print out that newer version. That link I sent you will remain uh, current, uh, regardless of what updates are done. In other words, you'll be able to print using that link anytime, okay. and you'll get the latest version. All right. Sounds good. Okay. So uh, if, uh, if you're interested, let me know, and I'll be happy to add you as an instructor. Um, also, did you find value, or did you have an opportunity to do the uh, course review? The walkthrough, the, the virtual walkthrough, yes. Yes. Yes, it was really interesting. Okay. But I do, do want to tell you to remind your instructors to edit uh, what they put out there. They were, uh, I know some missed their words on those PowerPoints, and you know that does happen. So, anyway, really? just, yeah. Well, you know, some, yeah. some of these, some of, 
I know I wasn't put on that to edit or anything, but yeah. you know, as an educator, you know, when we see it, we know it. Yep. It, it catches yeah. me as well. I have also been an editor, so uh, yeah, I've, I've yeah, done newsletters so. and and documents and white papers. So yes, I see the same thing as you, but um, mm -hmm. frequently uh, these uh, errors are actually made by people that hold uh, doctrines. So that that to me is a bit of a challenge. So. Well, but anyway, you know that 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 in itself is the human part of us. We yeah. we are humans. We are people. We make errors regardless to what uh, degrees we hold. Mm -hmm. This is true. Um, so I did want happens. to yeah I did want to remind you about freeconferencecall dot com, uh, and the reason is I continue to record these sessions and if you want to do the same you will only be able to get about one maybe two sessions in your recordings before you'll fill up and they'll ask you to start paying for it so remember when you come in uh, every once in a while go to freeconferencecall.com and um, let me go to the right page oh I guess I'm there uh, if you go to history and recordings, you'll see all of the sessions that you had. And if you notice, um, none of mine have any um, space used up. Although I do have a number of courses here. For example, fall semester class six was on the 6th of October, but there's nothing here. And the reason why is I downloaded the file I deleted the file from online and then I went back here to account info and you notice I still have according to this one gigabyte available of the one gigabyte that they give you for free you have mm. to you have to keep an eye on that or else uh, you're gonna lose a recording and that's you know hopefully that will never happen uh, but mm. I find that I if I put one class on there and I start teaching another, I go, oh, I forgot. So I've got to go run over to here and download what I've done and delete it so that the second one will save properly. Um, it's right around, right around 500 megs, right around 50% of what uh, is available for free you can use mm -hmm. in about a 90-minute session. So okay. it may be a little more, maybe a little less, uh, depending upon things like your video quality, your audio quality, and the number of people that connect in. Uh, so just be aware of that. It can um, cause you uh, some concerns if you don't uh, track it and go delete the old stuff. Uh, you can download them, but then uh, remember to uh, delete what's, uh, the, what's left on the server so you don't get in trouble mm -hmm. space-wise. Because they will, okay. they will say, "Okay, we, you know, we'll sell you more gigabytes." No, I, I never agree with anything that um, charges us when the charge is not necessary. For example, we did used to use um, uh, Join.me as our online course uh, teaching software. But then they started saying, you know, the uh, the free version only allowed, I don't even remember, but it, they reduced the number to like five maximum or something. And I said, well, um, if you decided to purchase it, it's like $200 a year. And I said, mm. nah, I'm not interested in that for the uh, instructors. So I searched around and found freeconferencecall.com. Now, there are other... Um, free capable uh, softwares out there you don't have to stick with free conference call uh, use whatever works best for you uh, the only reason I um, point out freeconferencecall.com is that I uh, want to keep it consistent so that you always have something to fall back to 
but there are some people, for example, that are really good at um, Google, um, what's it called? Google Plus or Google Groups or Google Live or YouTube Live, you know, those sorts of things. Those will work. Uh, there's, mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing to keep you from using them. I just don't want to teach a bunch of different tools. <clears throat> Besides, I would have to go learn them well enough to be able mm -hmm. to teach them. So, free conference call is my choice, at least for this week. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let me go to our do our course outline and see what we still have to work on. Oh, oh that's a racetrack. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, um, have either of you spent time uh, learning about the quizzes? We've sort of discussed the uh, uh, what to call the activities, the resources. We've discussed the Moodle organization. We've discussed hiding um, certain things within the Moodle. Uh, we've talked a little bit, and I think about three or four sessions, on the quizzes themselves and the questions. But that's something that you really must know um, and be proficient with in order to use what's available there online. Um, Right. Well, I downloaded uh, Moodle's, I've uh, forgotten the point, Moodle's something, uh, but I've downloaded it and I've been kind of going back, playing back and forth with it, um, so not a whole lot of time with it because I hadn't had a whole lot of time, but um, I am, you know, familiarizing myself with that. Okay. And, you know, that's what I was going to get with you. It will probably be after the convocation um, to try to transfer what I have in my Moodle to, um, I guess, to the CHMJI uh, okay. Moodle. All right. Um, as a reminder, I did put together and let me jump here and see if there's one for you. I actually put together what are called instructor workspaces within the Moodle. And mm -hmm. yeah, there's one with your name on it. So, um, oh, okay. There. So I just need to, well, I guess I can just yeah, play you with could, that. <laughs> yep, you could uh, download or upload there. Um, and uh, then if you wish to... Uh, have it moved over, I can help with that. Okay. <sighs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, um, either way, whatever works for you. Um, okay. When you back up a Moodle course, it will actually change it to a zip file, and then mm -hmm. um, we can restore it wherever you like. Um, if you've done a lot of work on one, uh, just make sure you back it up periodically, and then download that backup. Okay. And, yeah, and then you'll have it available yeah. to uh, upload here. Uh, Moodle okay. is very, very modular. Um, so, okay. of course, that I've actually looked into uh, one of my... Uh, one of the things that interests me is apprenticeships. And mm -hmm. I have been trying to... Uh, examine the possibility of putting up some uh, trade type apprenticeship courses into this Moodle so that people could use it uh, here in the Southern Maryland area as part of our Community Development Corporation. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, to that end, I've actually been out searching for Moodle courses. And there are many out there that are free. You can download it and they they, you know, you, you take a look at it and say, yep, that's something I would like. And you say, download it, and it turns into a zip file, and then you can m upload it to your own Moodle. So Moodle's okay. a, yeah, yeah, Moodle is pretty smart. It works very okay. well for things like that. It doesn't mess up the courses. Now, there are version discussions. For example, if you use a particular plugin, uh, sometimes a uh, grade module or a notification module. Um, there could be some um, exercise modules. Those are all added after the fact with Moodle. 
And I've tried really mm-hmm. hard to keep our Moodle as generic as possible. So, mm-hmm. um, again, you can go hog wild with Moodle, um, <laughs> but I don't. And the reason is I want to make sure that uh, we are... If one of these days, let's just say this because I remember there have been numerous discussions. Um, the Church of God in Christ actually uh, put up a couple different Moodles over the course of the last few years. And um, mm-hmm. if for some reason the Church of God in Christ um, Board of Education decides to formally sponsor a Moodle space and offer things like online courses that aren't CHMJI, um, we could, we the uh, assembled CHMJI uh, instructors here uh, in, in our Moodles, you could download the course and then upload it onto the Church of God in Christ webpage, and it would work there as well. So mm-hmm. again, I, yeah, I'm trying to keep things so that if somebody does say, you know, this is what you will do, then it it will be simple for us to do so. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm not trying to design something that's just so full of bells and whistles that it it won't work elsewhere. That's not my right. my uh, purpose in this. I'm teaching you the basics. I'm not teaching you advanced Moodle. I'm teaching you the basics. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. Uh, Evangelist Brent, anything um, that you wish to uh, speak about? I mean, I, I'm sort of covering a number of different things, um, and so I wanted to make sure that I'm not missing anything that you might want to cover. Well, I know that we are, you know, we're expected to do, uh, uh, do our whatever our our practice. Mm-hmm. Um, starting next week, is my is my understanding. Within uh, the next two weeks, uh, I I will, uh, you know, I do understand that uh, Holy Convocation is a big deal, and a lot of people plan for it. Uh, and stay entirely focused while they are there. So yeah. we are probably going to slow down right around, you know, that week. Uh, okay. So. so so that's the third. Would that be the third and the tenth? Um, my thinking November. is. Well, no, my thinking is that we will still be. Um, we'll still have our class on both Saturdays. But a number of people may be absent because they are traveling. Right. So. Right. Yeah. If you. Well, that that's that Saturday. Uh, the tenth is that Saturday, right before official day. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. A lot is going on that Saturday. I think. You imagine that. Even the, yeah. the scholarship yeah. dinner is. It's Saturday, Saturday afternoon too, I believe. Wow. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, um, I have just been sort of going through here and looking at it about the only thing that I think we really need to uh, spend some time on is indeed our um, grading and uh, Moodle, uh, the way Moodle actually measures grades and the like. Ooh. Hello, Evangelist Fields. Hello. Hello. I see you're there. Okay. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, I am. Very, very good. Very good. Okay, thank you. Um, I am hearing some um, um, uh, echoing I hear my voice echoing, which indicates that I'm on your speakers instead of a headset. Uh, well, there we go. All right, so um, let's see, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, let's go into the Moodle, and we'll take a look Hold at... On. I'm going to go down to our course development space, and we're going to play around a little bit within the... Uh, quiz areas 
uh, as you are uh, designing your courses and your uh, questions, you can go over to administration for your particular Moodle space and within your course administration is an area called question bank. So look for that uh, if you, uh, it could be to the left or the right of on your screen. I, I do what's called docking my okay. that block. So I dock it over to the left, but it's probably to the right. <laughs> There. Evangelist Brand, I'm letting you know I have muted you. So when you want to get back on, just give us a wave. If you <laughs> need to, excuse me, need to say anything. Um, so within the uh, Moodle uh, quiz area, you have all of your questions. You can put as many questions on here as you like. Um, I've seen as many as a hundred questions on there. No issues at all. Uh, just be prepared to look at the various questions because some of the uh, question names may not be very evident. You may not be able to see exactly what uh, you are, you know, what type of question it is until you actually open it. So if you're in the Moodle and you're looking at the questions that are already there, uh, remember that there's an icon that shows the type of question it is and if you hover over that little pictorial icon it will tell you the type of question in this case this is a multiple choice question excuse me multiple choice this one is uh, multiple choice as well this one is matching and I don't think I have a true false no I don't and this one is short answer so um, the little icon will tell you what your various types of questions are as well. Um, if you want to demonstrate, in other words, view the question as it would be included on an exam, you have a little um, uh, magnifying glass here that says preview and you can click on the question and this is how the question would appear in your exam, your quiz, your midterm, your final. This is how it would look. So remember, uh, we always talk about there's a reason for standardization and there's a reason for variety. The standardization has to do with fonts in your quiz questions. Every quiz can have different fonts but it looks really weird for your students. So try and establish a set of fonts that you're going to use throughout and then stick with them. Um, so uh, there's that one. Let me do a multiple choice. You can click on that one to preview it. And here's what it looks like. And you notice um, just some, uh, and I'm sure Many of you know this better than I do, but you can um, put in qualifiers throughout the question that are helpful for the students, more challenging for them. For example, I say, um, uh, in this one I say multiple answers are correct. And then I say more than one answer must be chosen in order to obtain full question credit mark all that apply and then down here it says select one or more and so um, as you are working with the students remember that if a particular question has some <coughs> excuse me some uh, uh, let's say multiple answers or um, you have uh, let's say a matching question I do this with matching a lot. I say each answer may be used once, more than once, or not at all. In other words, I don't give them the opportunity to say, oh, I've matched this one and this one and this one, so the fourth one must be this. And I always design it so they can't do that. So they can't get that extra one simply because it's the last remaining one to match. Um, so I always put in extra detractors uh, that are not 
accurate when they select them. But uh, remember, you know, again, make your fonts match within uh, your questions. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so uh, the other thing you can do, let's say we have a particular uh, thing here, and this one I think it, I called it blah, so that tells me it's not um, a valid question. But uh, yeah, blah, please select as many answers as needed. Single answer question is not entirely correct or something like that. Like one or north, north west, south, east, or whatever. Um, but let's say that's a, a question that um, we wish to uh, copy and just modify it slightly. Uh, you can actually take questions that have been built by you or anyone else and then click this little um, icon here that says duplicate. And when you do, it will actually create another question based on the same information that you had in the first one. You'll have to change the name a little bit. Let's call this blah2. And we'll go down here to the very bottom. You notice it, it has all of the question information that you've already put in there, everything that you've designed for. So instead of, um, in this case, we say blah, well, we're going to change this to blah2 uh, in the instructions, the actual question test, then go down to the bottom and uh, save. Now, save and continue editing, that just means it's going to keep you on this page. If you save changes, you're going to go back to the, uh, the question bank. So I am clicked on save changes. And so now within the question bank, we should have blah and blah too. See, there they are. So um, the good news is, as soon as you start building questions, you actually have the building blocks for more. And uh, once you get started, it should be pretty simple to do. Now, what are the what are the three question types that you should use? Everybody remember? Multiple choice, true and false, should answer. No, you're, you're close. Multiple choice, true, false, and what's the third one? Matching. Matching is the third one. Yeah, matching, matching, yeah. Right. Okay. And, and yep, the reason for that is they are the easiest ones to self grade. Um, let me go back within the course. Um, I'm just going to go up here to course dev, and we're going to go take a look at one of the um, quizzes. Uh, this is not a good one. Well, I'm just going to go to this one that says sample quiz. And I'm going to say continue the last attempt. Sure, whatever. And see, these are all um, essay type answers. So, you know, I, I type an answer here, but let's say I spell something wrong. And we just talked about that, Dr. Curry. What if I spell something wrong and you, the instructor, have said, you know, the answer is spell wrong with two L's. If I submit that question, Moodle is going to say that question is wrong even if it's just a, a minor issue. For example, um, somebody says uh, Bishop Charles Mason, and somebody says Bishop Charles H. Mason, and somebody says Bishop Charles H. with a period Mason, and someone else says Bishop Charles Harrison Mason, and someone else says Charles H. Mason. You know, you have to put all of those in there as acceptable answers in order to make sure that your uh, Moodle will grade itself properly. So I always uh, urge you to use uh, quest, uh, quiz types, question types, that all they have to do is select. If they start typing, you have no idea whether 
you have no idea whether Moodle is going to grade it correctly or not. So Ooh. that's always my uh, recommendation that you, um, uh, yeah, surely the page, that's to do true false matching and multiple choice for that reason. Let me go find a course or a, uh, uh, let's see, courses under development. I'm going to see if I can find a quiz that we can actually take and grade. Um, nope, so it would be under local and special use. Yep. I think I have one in the old church administration course. So we're going to go down here and look at a quiz. Hopefully there's one that contains multiple choice, true, false, and matching. So let's try this. Midterm exam. Attempt the quiz now. Yep, there's matching, there's matching, there's matching, there's multiple choice, multiple choice, good. So we could uh, try this and say, all right, for this one. Oh, by the way, um, remember I uh, asked everyone as you are designing your questions to put them at one point each and mm -hmm. you know, make okay. that your basis for question design. And then after you start integrating them, then add your weight. For example, this is one, two, three, four, five separate selections. Well, you don't want that to be one point. In other words, the same value as a multiple choice. So what I typically do is, like for a matching, if it's five different choices, I make that five points. So, you know, I just go through here and do some selections here and do, do, do and then another one here and then about there and thereabouts so anyway I, what I'm trying to demonstrate is you know that one would have been five points this one would have been three points this would be four points um, this would be one All of the following are taught as human relations competencies except, which one? Uh, let's say obedience, because I think that's what it is. But anyway, uh, long-range planning is, to a large extent, based on, well, let's just say, the needs of the congregants. Author identifies a series of steps, incorporating as a 501c3. What is the order? No idea, so I'll just put it down there. There's another selection. So each one of these multiple choice questions is one point. But the other ones up higher that were actual matching, each matching I've made one point. So that uh, question itself could be five points all by itself because it has five individual selections within it. Does that make sense? It does. Okay, so I'm going to just try and finish this up. Gosh, we're only about halfway done. Well, I'm just going to say that that's all I'm going to take right now. I'm going to go down to the bottom. Oh, my gosh, 25 questions. Yep, I'm going to say submit all and finish. And it's going to say, are you sure you haven't answered them all? I say, yeah, sure. And it says, here's the grade I got. I got a 21 out of 100. So that's the advantage of multiple choice matching and true-false. The moment the student finishes that particular quiz or midterm or final exam, they can see their grade. And so I always recommend that you do, you know, like for uh, 100 for the maximum number of points and then weight the selections for the matching higher than a multiple choice and leave multiple choice and true false one point each. And the students can actually go through and review the errors that they made. They can review the things they got correct, the things they did not get correct. And also, if you notice right here, there's a description that says 
what is the correct selection. So um, I really uh, appreciate Moodle being able to provide this immediate feedback in a quiz as soon as the students take it. To me, that is, you know, for example, correct answer is substantiation of contributions. Hey, I got it right. I meant to do that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> anyway, um, so um, the student can very, very quickly get their feedback. Uh, you can uh, find out exactly how they're doing. Uh, and they can find out how they're doing. So that, to me, is a very, very powerful way of doing it. Uh, let's see. So now I'm in. Let me go back down to course development. And you as the instructor, let's say you have had your students taking your particular exams. Now how do you find out what they've done? Um, you want to look for grades. So go to administration, and within your course space, let me see if I can find it, there's grades. And it literally says everything that you put in here as a grade-bearing activity, uh, this is actually arranged uh, vertically, quiz, quiz, advanced up upgrade, online text, upload a single file, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, all of those have the capability of being used for your course total. And here's one, for example. Uh, it says this person got a 35.71%, which I, I don't like. I don't like points. But anyway, uh, and that's why. I don't think there's any difference between a you know 75.6% and a 75.7%. Um, but this does allow you to view uh, the uh, grades that your students have gotten. And let's see if I can get, I'm going to try one that I've already seen. And I, it's been a while since I've pulled this up. But nope, I'm going to have to find the exact steps to uh, see the uh, grades for the individual, but um, there's actually, and I've got to look for it, but there's actually a um, uh, report that you can get, no, nope, this one isn't it, that shows in a nice um, sensible chart the individual's name, the quiz, and the grade they got on it. And it's all on one page, so I've got to find that. This may be it, but it looks way too uh, busy for what I'm trying to do. So I, I will try and find that for everyone, because that's a great page for you to pull grades for all of your students. But again, I have to look for that specifically. Um, any questions so far? Man, we're 10 minutes away from the end tonight. Um, any questions? Any questions? I'm sorry, Evangelist Brent. Let me unmute you. There we go. Evangelist Brent, I got you back now. Okay. Um, yeah. You were on the phone, and so... Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So, uh, I hope everybody uh, was able to see that for a, a minute. Let's see. What else am I looking at? Yeah, grading design, grading usage, and question weighting. The weighting of questions is totally up to you. You can, for more uh, valuable sections, you can weight them higher. And you can also tell Moodle to put an established maximum number of points. And it will actually calculate if you have you know, 12 or 14 or 22 or 28 or whatever. Uh, questions within your quiz, but you say you want it to be a maximum of 100, it will calculate per question points automatically. So that's helpful as well. You just put the questions in, you tell it you want to do a maximum of 100, you make sure each question is weighted properly. Uh, normally I try and do it based on the number of answers. Um, and then Moodle will calculate their grades automatically. 
So. Elder Ward. Yes, ma'am. Do we use the uh, workspace, I think, it's what it's called, workspace, under our name to practice creating questions and stuff? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's probably a good place to do it. Okay. Uh, and, and I gave you full permissions within each one of your workspaces so that you can create, modify, uh, play around with the various fonts, uh, uh, copy them, uh, play around with feedback and see what it looks like. And then you can actually take the, your own quizzes. You do what's called an attempt and, um, and then take a look at how how your grade looks to you as if you were the student. That's literally how okay. I learned to do it. I, I would create a quiz, take the quiz, grade myself, and look at it and say, you know, I could provide more information here. Um, and, mm -hmm. uh, and so my, my quizzes became more and more robust by doing that. Okay. Uh, yep. And if you have any questions, just write me and say, you know, I'm I'm in my question bank in my uh, instructor workspace, and I'm looking at a particular question named this, and uh, okay. I can actually go in and take a look at it with you, um, or separately, and you know, tell me what is uh, what you're observing or what you think should have happened, and I'll be able to help describe it for you. Okay, I know I've saved some. Um, the PowerPoints and, and a couple of worksheets and stuff from the classes I teach now to Google Drive. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't sure where. So I would load it actually into the Moodle workspace, instructor workspace. Right. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> there is no direct connection between Google Drive and the Moodle. I okay. use Google Drive a lot, but then if I have a particular file that I want to get over to Moodle, I download it to my computer, and then I upload it to Moodle. I can't go oh, okay. from Google Drive to Moodle. Okay, because it was al they are already on my computer, and so I was for some reason I was thinking I needed to upload them to Google Drive first. No. Okay. No, Google Drive is just like. Uh, I think about it as being like Microsoft Office out in the cloud. Okay. Um, and in order to put it into the Moodle, it has to be uploaded. But in order to upload it, you have to be able to select it. And you can't do that in Google Drive. So, nah, download it to your computer and then upload it to Moodle. I've found that to be the safest. Okay. All right. Thank you. Certainly. Um, now, uh, as a reminder, uh, this brought something to my remembrance. Uh, Moodle cannot unzip a zip file. So if you have a particular file compressed using pkzip or 7-zip or winzip, any of those zip type uh, file compression programs, make sure you decompress it before you put it up on Moodle. Don't expect that Moodle's going to be able to do something with a zip file. Um, but that's about it for this evening. Uh, I don't have anything else to cover uh, for this evening. So does anyone have any questions? Okay, wonderful. Um, thank you so much. I, I do appreciate uh, the opportunity to be able to help you all become uh, good, good, good online instructors. Um, you know, it's, I, I enjoy seeing people teach online because you have such capability in, in the classrooms and sometimes moving it to an online format is such a challenge. So I want to help you be successful there. So that's what I enjoy doing. Um, that being said, I think we're all done. Um, let's see. Sister Fields, would you please uh, finish this out in prayer? Yes, God, we thank you for your goodness and for how you have allowed us to come together on this evening to learn and expand. God, I just ask that you bless each one that is a part of this ministry. Give us wisdom and understanding 
and bless each church that is associated. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, everybody. Have a wonderful evening.